So in a way, my writing is a way of trying to quilt together these stories that are each one so special. And, and sometimes my writing is really is, is terrible. But in a way, it's just this matrix whose only purpose is to preserve things that I think are fantastic. That's great. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the origins of Fight Club. Now, you were a member of the Cacophony Society, is that correct? Yeah. And if you could, if, and I, I guess it was, well, if you could talk about your experience in the Cacophony Society and then, um, and then the, the sort of the emergence of, of the ideas for Fight Club. I know it started as a short story, is that correct? And right. Then, okay. It started as a, uh, it started on an afternoon at work, two o'clock in the afternoon right after lunch. And I wanted to write a short story, and I wanted to experiment using rules as a transitional device. So I just had to come up with seven rules. Just arbitrary seven rules. What if, what if there was a place you could go and get into a fight as casually as you would go ask someone to dance? What would the rules be for that place? And the whole thing was just an experiment in structuring. So you know, again, so much of my work is just an experiment for creating a context for the stories that I collect. I'm not so much a painter as I am the person that owns the gallery in which the paintings are exhibited. And I'm trying to ongoingly create a context for preserving things that I collect from other people that I find you know, that I, I really treasure. So I came up with these seven rules that would allow me to just jump around in time and place and topic uh, as long as I came back and, and touched on a rule. And I wrote that story in half an hour. And that became chapter six of Fight Club. It was the first short story I ever sold to a magazine. Um, so that was, you know, again, it was just a, a structuring uh, exercise. Um, can you talk a little bit about the process of seeing it moved into film, you know, at all? Or what, what that, how um, much of a part of it were you? Did you work on the script? Did you, you know, um, what did you think of the movie ultimately? The uh, my editor had sat me down really early, and he said, "Of all the books that are published, two percent are optioned for movies, and of that two percent, only two percent ever get go into production." So he said, "This is not going to happen, especially not with this book." This will never, ever, ever happen. <laughs> so, so I had no expectation. You know, my heart just wasn't there. Uh, it really did occur as this, this thing that I had no attachment to. Uh, and so when it did start to happen, I, it was uh, kind of sweetly absurd because since the book was based on real things from my life, seeing my friends and so, seeing these events recreated on this very grand scale with these very attractive people <laughs> was, was kind of shocking and, and nostalgic that there was a sweetness there. Like, a, yeah, like going through a high school annual. There was a sense of kind of distance and, and, and loss. So it was very sweet. And can you talk a little bit about the phenomenon of the, the sort of popularity of it and then, and then the sort of I guess a lot of people have started bike clubs, I guess, in the, in the aftermath of it. And that goes back to the Cacophony Society, because Cacophony was basically an organization of people who had really boring jobs. They were uh, letter carriers for the post office, they were bookstore clerks at Powell's, they were people who had really, you know, very structured hourly job lives. And they needed a way to have chaos in their lives for a very structured, like, window of time. You know, if we do this kind of a theme party, we can be crazy, we can be insane anarchists from four o'clock until midnight on Saturday night. <laughs> and so it was a way of having completely structured chaos in your life and being able to schedule that every week. Uh, kind of an experiential potluck because people would host it, people would come up with concepts the way you did when you were kids and you would play a game. Okay, the boards, the boards are safe, but the ground is lava. So if you touch the ground, and you would do that, you just arbitrarily come up with rules. You know, the first rule of Fight Club is you don't talk, you just come up with a rule 
and another rule, and you invent the game instantly, and you have the freedom and the authority to do that. And, and Cacophony let us do that every week and give up our boring lives for you know, two or three hours.